scripture when you find your place. Acts chapter number 13, verse number 22. <clears throat> Acts chapter number 13 and verse number 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God today. Bless it, I pray. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Father, help us to be, Father, uh, that which would be a man after your own heart or a woman after your own heart. Lord, do those things which be well-pleasing in thy sight. Father, I pray that you rebuke the devil from around here today. God, let us remove all the thoughts of this world and the cares of this world. Or from around us for a little while. God, that we might rejoice around the word of God. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Paul is, is speaking here. And he's talking about the rejection of Saul as the king of Israel. And he is giving testimony in the New Testament of what uh, the Old Testament says in 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded, commanded thee. Now, David was that man that was after God's own heart. He was a dedicated believing man that all the purpose in his life was to do the will of God. Now Paul is giving testimony of this in the New Testament and it is backed up in the Old Testament. Now why did, how did David come into power? He came into power because Saul, uh, their king at that time, uh, went away from what God intended and God had planned for the nation of Israel. And Israel was ruled by judges, and then the prophet Samuel came along, and then they, the nation of Israel did not want to be ruled that way. They wanted a king. Now, rather than following God and following the plan of God, they desired a king, and that king would be over them like all the other nations. And so Saul was allowed to be their king. And he was, he was given the kingship of the, because they wanted a king. But Saul was, was a, uh, a strange fella. He strayed from what God wanted to do. He made an offering uh, that he shouldn't have made uh, in the temple. And we, we may go back and study all of that. I just want to give you an overview today. But then after that, Saul became a man that the Spirit of God had departed from him and an evil spirit came upon him. In other words, he was out of the will of God. Now listen, friend, if you're out of the will of God, you're not ruled by the Spirit of God. And that's what's wrong with a lot of folks today that get out of the will of God, wonder why they get in trouble, because they're not controlled by the Spirit of God. God help us to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Because when men and women begin to walk after the flesh, you fulfill the desires of the flesh. And that's what Saul had done. He, he quit following the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God left him. Not that he, not that he uh, lost his connection with God. If Saul had uh, repented of the evil things that he had done, then he would not have been ruled by an evil spirit. You're going to be ruled in your lifetime by the Spirit or by the flesh. As a child of God, you're going to be led by one thing, you're going to be led by the Spirit of God or you're going to allow the flesh to dictate what you do in life. And those two evils will be, a, or, the, or that good and that evil will be present until the day you go home and be with the Lord. I'll be glad for the day when I don't have to fight the flesh any longer. 
And, you know, we yield to the flesh and we do the things of the flesh. We yield to the Spirit of God and we do the things of the Spirit. God help me to follow the Spirit of God and not the flesh. Flesh gets me more trouble than anything I know. That's what gets me in trouble. And, and so David was a man that wanted to follow the Spirit of God. Now I know David had his issues and we'll get to those if God will let us continue on these studies and preaching in the life of David. But he had his issues and his problems, but he still always repented and came back to God. God have to judge him. God have to lay the rod to him, but he always came back. God saw uh, never did. Uh, he, he after, you know, he even sought the life of David, sought to kill David. So Saul, after the Spirit of the Lord departed from him, that evil spirit came upon him, and he followed that evil spirit. And it got so bad that he'd have to call upon David to come and play the harp to soothe his, his uh, multi-personality. And so we see here that David being that man after God's own heart, and I won't preach to you this message, a man after God's own heart. Now, where do you stand as a believer today? Where do you stand as a Christian? Are you living your Christian life just uh, humdrum and do the, you know, get along as best you can? Or is it the desire of your heart to be as close to God as you possibly can? Now, we're living in a day of a lukewarm church. We're living in a day where people just want to get by. They aren't interested in having the power of God on their lives. They're just interested in getting by and enjoying life the best thing. I'm telling you what, there's no better way to enjoy life to, than to enjoy it led by the Spirit of God. Amen? And I Listen, I don't want to be just one of those that just gets by. I want to be one led by the Spirit of God and obedient to the will of God and do what the Lord wants me to do as a Christian, as a pastor, as a preacher. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. So what made David this man after God's own heart? What made him that way? What was it in him that, that he chose, you know, that God chose him as the leader of the nation of Israel and anointed him king? Now this story goes a long way back. David spent a lot of time with the Lord as he was being a shepherd to those sheep. He spent a lot of time alone with the Lord. We get caught up so much in the hustle and bustle of life that we forget to spend time with the Lord. I'm as guilty as anyone in here as of not spending enough time alone with the Lord. And I'll tell you what, friend, there's nothing better than, than finding yourself a place or a time when you can just sit and reflect on the goodness of God. Now I can imagine David as a, as a shepherd boy out on the, uh, the field at night and watching and guarding those sheep and communing with the Lord how God touched him. I'm telling you some of the best times in the world between you and God is when you're by yourself and allowing the Lord to speak to your heart. And that's what David did. He allowed the Lord to speak to his heart. So what caused David to be a man after God's own heart. Well, number one, he was faithful and obedient. How many of you here desire to be faithful and obedient to the Lord? Say amen. We say that, and we want to do it. It's our desire, but what keeps us from it? How many of you this last week and, and I'm going to be the first one to admit to you, you know, that I didn't do everything right while I was on vacation. I'll just tell you, you know, I, and, no, and nobody does any time. I enjoyed my vacation. I sat there and I fished, and I caught fish, and some days I didn't catch fish, but I spent a lot of money on bait, and I fed something. But I caught, but but just sat in there, and my wife tell you, she don't know how I do it. I just sat there. I sat there and hold that fishing rod and look out over there, and that's the most peaceable thing that I know of, besides sitting in a tree stand deer hunting. But some of the best times to reflect is when you're doing something you like to do, and you've got alone with the Lord, and you're able to reflect. 
and think on the goodness of God. Now, David was doing something that he was in training to do for the nation of Israel. He was shepherding sheep. That's what he was doing. Not knowing maybe at the time that one day he was going to be the shepherd of a nation. But he learned what he learned out in the field by himself. And God chose him, a man after his own heart, to finally lead the nation of Israel. What made him that way? He was obedient to the Lord. He followed God. He, he was uh, faithful in me. I believe he was, was faithful and obedient to Jesse, his father. Now, Jesse had those sons, but David was the youngest, and he was the one that stayed out of the limelight. These other bustling boys of his, they went off to battle, and they were uh, arrogant, but God didn't choose any of them. He chose the one that would seem the least likely to be the leader. You go back to the story where, where <clears throat> Samuel anointed David. You go back to the story, all the brothers passed before him. And the Lord said, none of them are the leader. And he inquired, is there not a son left? Is this all the sons of the house of Jesse? And somebody said, ah, oh, there's one more. There's one more. Uh, son, he's the youngest. He's out there tending the sheep. Now, one of the lowliest jobs you could have was a, was a sheep tender. That was one of the, I mean, just tending sheep. That was one of the lowest jobs because, you know, you weren't thought very highly of if you were a shepherd. <clears throat> but that's what David was doing. And Samuel said, bring him to me. Oh, not him. All those brothers said, no. Nah. It ain't him. He's out there tending sheep. He don't do anything except out there at night and, and uh, piddles around with those sheep. He's not learned nothing. He don't know nothing. He's young. He's not got any experience. But he came. He went and sent and got David. And when, when Samuel saw David, the Lord said, that's him. That's the one. Maybe the most unlikely to be a leader, but he chose him because that was who God wanted. God uses Anyone that is available to be used. And David was available. I believe out there communion with God, he, I believe he said, Lord, whatever you want me to do in life, I'll do it. If you want me to stay here the rest of my life and tend these sheep, I'll do it. But he was obedient to do what God wanted him to do. So David was anointed king. Nobody knew that at the time. Why I don't believe why Samuel anointed him. They didn't understand all of that. But it, come, it would come out later as he was the anointed of God. He was a faithful and obedient to his father Jesse. He tended those sheep. He fought for those sheep. He gives the testimony of a lion and a bear that came out and he slew them to protect those sheep. He was obedient to do the best he could that God had him doing. And friend, you, all, you and I ought to be the best that God wants us to be as far as he has commanded us to do something for him. No matter what it is. If it's just coming Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and sitting here and, and, uh, and praying and enjoying the good service of the Lord, amen. Do the best you can, amen. Do it with faithfulness and God will reward you. Whatever he's got for you to do, do it with an obedient heart. That's what David did. He didn't question God. He did it with a beating heart. After he was anointed, he went back to tending those sheep. Maybe David didn't understand all of that, but he went back to tending those sheep. And, and as he tended those sheep and he fought for those sheep, he did whatever he was called on to do. Whatever he was called on to do, he did it. Now there he was, and, and uh, Saul, that evil spirit of the Lord, came upon Saul and somebody said, let's play him some music. Maybe that'll soothe him. Does anybody know a good musician? Somebody said, I know David. David's a good musician. He, he can strum the harp. He can pluck that harp and make that harp sound so good. Go get him. So they went and got David, and David played before Saul, and it soothed that evil spirit that was upon him. It, 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 it kept him from going completely insane when David would play that soothing music upon a harp. 
And so he was obedient to do that. He went, he went and done it, and, and uh, he played that before uh, Saul, and it, it soothed his mind, it calmed his mind. And then, uh, at, you know, at last we found out David went back to tending sheep. But whenever called upon, he was obedient to do whatever he ha had to do. When his father called on and said, hey, you need to go down and check, uh, check on your brother because they're down in the battle and here you take these uh, sheep, you take these, uh, you take these cheese, you take this bread, you take this kid, you load it upon uh, the ass and you take it down there and check on your brother. David didn't question that. He just put it all on there and off he went. Now, what happened to those sheep? Somebody else was taking care of them while David was gone. He did not abandon the sheep. I promise you, he did not abandon those sheep. Somebody else was there to take over while he was gone. So he went down there and got before his brothers and, and they looked at him, what are you doing here? But he just did what the Lord, uh, what, oh, you know what, uh, his father Jesse told him to do, he's obedient to daddy. And he went down there and, and they made fun of him, oh, you just come down here to see the fight. But he was obedient. He was obedient to do what his father told him to do. Young folks, listen to me. You be very well to do what your parents say to do. You do very well to mind mama and daddy. You do very well to be obedient to what mom and dad says because God honors those that are obedient to their parents. God honors those. The great preacher that got saved late in life, Oliver Green, wrote a great library of books. And I heard him make the comment one time that he said, I will not live to be an old man because I did not honor my father and my mother. And he died at about 60 years old. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But he knew that. He, he was rebellious. He was mean. He was hateful and, a, and a, a, a very wicked man in his young days. And he said, I'll never live to be an old man. Because I wasn't obedient to mom and dad. I was, I was rebel, rebellious against them. I did not honor them. But young folks, it do you good to honor your mom and your daddy. Do you good to be obedient as David was. He was obedient to his dad. Then he was obedient when called upon to fight Goliath. We'll get to that story later. You remember what David said when they all, you know, they're here they are yelling at each other and and uh, the place over there where they were at, if one, if one made the move first, the other had the advantage. And uh, one army moved first, the other army had the advantage because of the lay of the land. But they just stand back there and yell at each other. And big, big old bully Goliath out there just threatening all of them. Nobody, you know who should have been out there fighting Goliath? Saul, because he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. But he wasn't going to do it. He, 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 he wasn't going to go out there and fight. But when called upon, David was obedient, and he looked at his brothers. Is there not a cause here? Is there not some What are you all doing standing around, and one man down there defying the whole army of Israel? What's the matter with y'all? He was obedient when it came time to fight Goliath. He was obedient, he was, and he was also willing to do whatever he was asked and not complain about it. How many of you are willing to do what the Lord asked without complaining? Boy, we can, we're the complainingest people that have ever lived. Most we complain about everything. Got everything in the world that we could possibly want. Live in the best nation on the world, and yet we complain because some we don't have. What do you What do you don't have that you really need? Anybody here? Have Is there something you really need that you don't have? You got food. You got a place to sleep. You got clothes. That's, that's their basic need. Preacher, there's things I want there. There's things I want. But not necessarily things I need. God said he'd supply all our need. And we should never complain about what God has done for us or what God has allowed us to have or what God has not allowed us to have. Be happy. David was happy. He didn't complain. Whatever, whatsoever the Lord said, he done it. 
I don't find David complaining any time right here. This, now, later on in David's life, David was a scoundrel. <laughs> I mean, you, David got by. Well, he didn't get by, but he done a lot of things that you and I would say, man, how in the world could he get by? He didn't get by with nothing. But we'll preach that to you later. But David's not complaining about God having him out there ten sheep. He's not complaining because he's not down there in the battle. That would come later. But he was just doing what God wanted him to do without complaining. Hey, can, wouldn't we be a whole lot better off as believers and as church? We just did what God said without complaining. Oh, I'll do it, but I don't want to. I'll do it because I have to. No, do it because it's the joy of the Lord in your heart that God wants you to do something, you do it. That's like giving. That's like tithing. Well, I lost about half the crowd right there. What does the Bible say about tithing? It says give to the Lord. Don't be a God robber. What does it say about giving? God loveth a cheerful, hilarious gift. Don't complain. Just do what the Lord wants you to do. God will bless you. Whatever God asks you to do, do it. You remember the when, when Jesus was... Uh, he was there, and uh, Mary said, uh, what are we going to do? And the other one looked at him and said, whatsoever he saith to you, that's what you do. Whatsoever the Lord saith to you, do it. If he says, if he says come over to the church and pick a, pick a uh, trash out of the parking lot, whatsoever he says, do it, do it. Now, ain't no trash in the parking lot. I'm just using that as an example. If he says go over to the church at 10 o'clock every day and pray, don't complain, just come over here to church every day at 10 o'clock and pray. Whatever he says, do it. It may seem minimal to you, but God's not interested in what we do. He's, he is, but he's, not, he's more interested in how we do it. God loveth a cheerful giver. God loves those and, and, and helps those that will do what he wants them to do with a cheerful heart. Amen. So David did that. He, he just went out and whatever God said to do, he did it. Whatever God wanted him to do, he did it. And he was a happy man. Now, later on, he got in a lot of trouble, but he was a happy man. He was always repentant to come back to the Lord and acknowledge his mistakes. So, so he, he was willing to do whatever he wanted to do. And then he had God-given courage. You know what we need in our churches today in our land is people with courage of the Lord. People with the courage to stand for what's right in this wicked, evil world. It may not always be pleasant. It may not always be, it may not always please everybody. But if, is, if it is of the Lord, we need to have courage to stand for what we believe and what is right and don't compromise to the things of the world or the devil and his crowd. Stand for what's right. We're living in the last days. Good soldiers need to raise their head and stand for what they believe. If you believe the word of God, you need to stand for what you believe in the word of God. Have courage as David had courage. He had courage to fight the battle that he would face. God give him courage. Listen. If we leaned upon the flesh and listened to the flesh and we did what the flesh wants us to do, we would not have, we'd be defeated all the time. If you do anything for, for God, it's going to be because God gives you courage to do it. If you're going to stand in this evil day, and the Bible says, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, you'll have to have the courage of God. You must have courage. He had God-given courage to fight the battles that he would face. David had the God-given courage to stand when no one else would stand. Now that's kind of an introductory message to who David was and how that he was a man after God's own heart. He did what God wanted him to do. He faced the giants by the power of God. He faced the enemy by the power of God. But David, essentially, the man after God's own heart, was one that was just obedient to do the will of God. 
Not, not our will, but the will of God. Are you willing to do the will of God? Listen, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you have no idea what I'm talking about. The Bible says you must be born again. There's never a lost man been able to stand for the Lord and stand for what's right and go to heaven. You go to heaven by being born again in the grace of God. You go to heaven by accepting Christ as your Savior. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The simplicity of the message is that God give his Son to die on the cross of Calvary and those that will call upon his name and believe that by faith will be saved and go to heaven. But except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. David was a man after God's own heart that believed God, that trusted God, and was saved by the power of God because he trusted in the Lord. Let me ask you, church, are you willing to trust the Lord? Are you willing to do whatsoever the Lord says for you to do? Are you willing to be obedient to him? Even if it goes against what you think is right or what you believe you've always done was right, if you do the will of God, God will always be right. If you follow the plan of God for your life, you'll never go wrong. Isn't that a great thing? We mess up the most when we don't follow the plan of God. Lord, help us to follow his plan. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, I pray, God, as we've tried to introduce a, a series of messages on the life of David, God, that we'd understand, God, that all we do must be done to the glory of God and must be done by the power of God. And, Lord, we're helpless to accomplish anything in our lives, great or small, except the hand of God be upon us. Lord, help us to be like David. Lord, be a man after your own heart. And strive to do your will in spite of the devil, in spite of the flesh. God, help us to walk after your spirit. Well, every head's bowed, no one looking around. I wonder if there'd be someone here this morning say, Preacher, I don't understand all of that. I